Hi everyone, so second bit now for that first lesson to do the trick. It might mess with your head a little bit, but we'll get used to it, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. Right, so second example says, given that sine A is four fifths, where A is obtuse, and cos B is 12 over 13, where B is acute, find the value of that. Right, first of all, if I'm using sine A minus sine sine A minus B, I need sine A and I need cos B, cos A, and I need cos B and sine A. So I need to have a look at a triangle. So for sine A, oops, sine A is opposite over hypotenuse there, and that's a 3, 4, 5 triangle, isn't it? So that's going to be 3 there. So I know that sine A was 4 fifths, and I know that cos A is 3 fifths. Now look at the other one now, so this is for cos B now. So cos B, the adjacent is 12, the hypotenuse is 3. So that's another high, uh, Pythagorean triple. So if I know that cos B is 12 over 13, I know that sine B is 5 over 13. So just a reminder, oh, I've done it, I've my button again. Uh, just a reminder, if I've got a fraction and it tells me acute or obtuse, I'm generally looking at, whew, I'm generally looking at drawing a triangle first. Right, come on, let's keep going with this. I do like a bit of to be fair. Okay. So I think hopefully I've got all the information. Oh, I've got one tan as well, one tan. So tan A is opposite over adjacent. Or do I? Could I just do a divide? No, do you know what? I don't need that. I can just cheat. Right, let's have a look at this then. So well, maybe I do need that tan. We'll find out in a minute. Sine A minus B is sine A cos B minus sine B cos A, or some form of combination of that. Uh, I think it says cos A sine B, but it doesn't really matter. So sine A is 4 fifths, cos B is 12 over 13, sine B is 5 over 13, cos A is 3 fifths. So what have I got? I've got 48 take 15, so I've got uh, minus, oh, hang on, I've got, not been careful here, have I? A is obtuse. If A is obtuse, cos is negative. Oh, it's going to catch me out there. Now we need to know. So my three fifths here is a minus. So we've got minus, minus gives us a plus. So sine A minus B will give me 63 over 65. I might actually use the tan B stuff here. Let me put that back in. So tan B, because it's obtuse, will be minus 4 thirds of tan A. So if you're making loads of mistakes now, I should give up really. Tan B will be 5 over 12. Right, so part B. So tan of A minus B is tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. Tan A minus B is going to be, so tan A is minus 4 thirds minus 5 over 12, put that right there, then 1 plus minus 4 thirds times minus 5 over 12. So tan of A minus B is minus 63 over 16. Now C, C is like proper sneaky. We know that cot is 1 over tan. 
So cos of a minus b, cos cot of a minus b is 1 over minus 63 over 16. So cot a minus b is minus 16 over 63. Job, job, job. That's not too bad, then, is it? <laughs> Look how messy it looks, though. So sorry about forgetting about the obtuse bit. It's a bit like carried away with myself. I'm putting the minus in there, but I'll spot it before we go too far. And I'll use the tan formula and then remember that cot is 1 over tan. Right, let's have a look at this one then. <laughs> so an approximate expression where theta is small and the range moves. Right then. So what have I got? So I've got cos A minus B that I'm using. That's the right one. So cos A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So cos of theta minus pi by 6 is going to be cos A, so that's cos theta cos pi by 6 sine theta sine pi by 6 there. Uh, cos pi by 6 is root 3 over 2. Sine pi by 6 is a half. Right then, now then, here's my messy bit. I've got to use the small angle approximations that we looked at. So I'm going to use small angle approximations because it says approximate and small. So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, really? So we use that. If you remember, sine theta is roughly theta. Tan theta is roughly theta, but cos theta is 1 minus a half of theta squared, which is just ridiculous really, isn't it? Right, oh, press button, don't press that button. So cos of theta minus root minus pi by 6 is root 3 over 2 lots of 1 minus a half theta squared plus a half lots of theta. Right, so what have we got then? If I expand my brackets, root 3 over 2 minus root 3 over 4 theta squared plus a half theta. Whew. Give the answer as a backwards quadratic. So I just need to switch the last two terms around. That's going to blow. The last two are going to kind of like blow people's minds with. Uh, I'll have a quick read of that. Is there anything else for this lesson? Is there any more examples? Yeah, there is. <laughs> oh my word. Right. Right, I'm going to stop this and do another vid for the last example. I'm going to ignore the proof there. Maybe, maybe not. Right, bye bye.